Hi friends, hope you are all doing well. So today I'm going to talk about postdoctoral positions in China. And uh, before I begin, I'd like to clarify a couple of comments which came on my channel. The first comment was people wanted to know what exactly is a fellowship or a postdoc fellowship. Now, just to explain, essentially a postdoc fellowship is like a temporary job and you essentially get paid a stipend during this time. You may often get some funding for travel, for health insurance, for attending conferences and so on while you are there at that particular university or research institution. And very often the title you get could be postdoctoral researcher, could be research associate, sometimes also a research scientist or assistant research scientist and something like that and sometimes there are named fellowships so you have Humboldt fellowship you have Fulbright fellowship you have different fellowships issued by different countries and uh, essentially the point here is the person should have a PhD that's why it's called a postdoc postdoctoral that means post PhD and typically these scholarships are given to people who have less than four years or less than seven years or less than 10 years after their PhD. This thing varies depending on the particular postdoc you are applying for. So now let's look at this issue. Now, some people have commented on my channel that uh, they have applied for a very large number of postdoc positions. They have a reasonable number of publications. In fact, one person said he has 26 journal publications in chemistry in uh, SCI index journals and they have not received any response from the different professors or different bodies. Now, one of the problems is that very often a large number of people apply to Western countries, for example, countries in Europe, or they apply to the US or Canada, and there is only so much funding for people here. So I suggest to people to also consider countries in the Asian region. And till now, I have also discussed the possibility of getting postdocs in Japan, Korea, and Singapore. And now I will tell you a postdoc possibility, which is very much likely in terms of getting a postdoc. That is a postdoc in China. Now, one of the things which has happened in the last 20 years, and you will notice that if you have been following research, is there has been a tremendous increase in publications in both scientific journals as well as conferences which are coming from China. And uh, you will also find that if you follow the scientific ranking of universities around the world, a large number of Chinese universities have broken into the top ranking. For example, Tsinghua University, Peking University, Shejiang University, Shanghai, Jiantong University, Fudan University, Nanjing University, Harbin Institute of Technology, Yunnan University, Wuhan University, and so on. So if you have been following the literature in your field, you are going to find more and more papers are coming out which are published from China. And these papers are often very good. They are very well written. The English language is good and so on. So what this does represent to you is that a lot of research activity is taking place in China. There is a lot of funding out there and you can possibly take advantage of that if you are a student or a PhD somewhere else in the world and you want to do a postdoc. Now one of the things you can do is you can just search in Google postdoc in China and you are going to find a large number of universities here. Now one of the things about the Chinese system is that it's very focused on cytometrics. So this is something which started out more in the eastern part of the world. So actually first I saw that Korea was very much impacted by cytometrics, Singapore, and also China. In fact, China is the source of the Shanghai ranking, which they essentially use to rank the different university, and this is very cytometric focused. So essentially, one of the reasons they took to cytometrics is they wanted to break out of the branding of a typical institution, and very often when institutions are ranked, there is a reasonable large component given to what is the perception of the institution in terms of uh, ranking by people. And this often is uh, 
somewhat colored as it often happens in the case of brand by the perception of those institutions. So again, many of the countries in the West which have universities which have existed for a long time, which have graduated many top people where there are a plethora of Nobel Prize winners and so, so on tend to have very high ranking. So again, the effort here was to break out into these rankings through the use of scientometrics, which is essentially the citations in journals, the edge index and so on. So again, this is something you need to follow that if you are applying to postdoc in China, you should have at least one good journal paper and what I mean by good is it should be in the SCI system. It should preferably be published in a web of science index journal. So that will certainly help your case. Now beside the postdoc positions which are out there in Google Scholar or some of the other website, I mean Google or some of the other website, you can also write to any professor in China. And again, the strategy here would be when you're doing your literature survey, keep your eye for professors in China who are working in your area. And you can certainly send your CV, your key publication to this professor. And it's very likely that this professor may be able to give you a postdoc straight away if he or she finds that you have a good publication record. So this is something you can use. Now, one of the tactics uh, which you can use, and uh, this is something which is uh, a fact which I came to know from one of the students whom I knew. And this was a person who had graduated from UK. So essentially he did his PhD from UK and then essentially he was a foreign student so his visa ran out and he was not able to get any job so at that time he was pretty desperate and so he applied to china and he was able to get a postdoc very quickly based on a professor and then he spent a year in china he published a couple of papers from there and then what he did he applied to australia and he was able to get a lecturer position there so Essentially, this kind of transition postdoc did help the student from recovering from the fact that he was not getting any job after PhD. Now, this is a situation which can happen to people. So, in many cases, you may not be thinking of building a career in China if you're not a person of Chinese national nationality, but you could use this time period to essentially build your CV and then move somewhere else. So, that's something which you can keep in mind. Now, I would generally say that um, if you apply to a Chinese university, you are very likely to get a postdoc very quickly. Because like I said, China is flush with funding. They have a lot of money going to different universities and so on. So I would suggest that you go for this option if you have not got postdoc in some different university which is highly ranked in the West. And uh, in case you are not able to get any of these positions, then you apply to China, you take advantage of the very good facilities which are often present in China in terms of equipment, computing, experimental labs and so on. You buttress your resume and CV and then you try somewhere else. So this is also going to give you a good boost to your CV and it's also going to actually help you to see another country, experience another culture, and then you are going to come back from it and maybe you can spend some time learning Mandarin, which is one of the popular languages in the world, and this will certainly help your case. So this was my take on getting postdocs in China. Now, of course, China is a relatively hard country to get into for a person who does not know Mandarin. I was in Zhuhai for some time and I found it uh, a very modern city, the infrastructure in China is excellent, the buildings are great, the railways are great, the road systems are great and so on. But it's a very Chinese country, so you need to know Mandarin if you want to move around in China. As far as the English language is concerned, from the university perspective, you can certainly manage in English, but it's much better if you learn some Mandarin, though Mandarin is one of the hardest languages to learn for people who 
are coming from different parts of the world because it's very different it has different tonal issues and so on so that's something to keep in mind now one of the good points about any socialistic type of country is that they have good public transportation they have places where you can stay as a foreign student or a foreign faculty so essentially they have dorms they have guest houses and so on and they take good care of you when you are there so if you are going to china it's very likely that if they give you a postdoctoral fellowship they will take care of your trip to china they will take care of your living in china they will generally be very nice and courteous to you and then when you are ready to leave china they will also help you in your way out so this is something to keep in mind so again this is my take on china and uh, i hope you enjoyed this video stay tuned to my channel for more videos on research postdoc and the higher education system in general see you soon